Welcome everybody to Challenge Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt, our next guest, 2012 a bronze medalist in the Paralympics, Mr. Joe Delagrave. Joe, how you doing, bud? Hey, doing well, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure to chat with you, Joe. So how are your uh, the three kids dealing with the craziness of coronavirus? Yeah, it's been a crazy, uh, what, month and a half, two months for us. I think um, March 15th is when I came home from training camp, and then everything kind of went down. And so, um, man, they're resilient. The kids are great. And, and we've had, I think everyone, all five of us in the house have had our, our fair share of blowups, uh, just keeping it real. But yeah, so, but they're resilient and they've, they've, uh, we've learned that if we've got shelter, we've got food, we've got a lot of love and maybe some patience and grace thrown in that it's, uh, it's done, we've done all right. So for, for our viewers, your background, you played everything, high school, right? You played three sport yeah. athlete and then uh, you were playing college football. You're going to go off and play college football. Yeah, I played a year, year of college football, and, and, and so that year was great and went through that year and played as a true freshman in Division II. So, um, and, yeah, and so that, that was, that was kind of college for me, and, and, and then obviously uh, had something happen in between there. Yeah, something. July 10th, uh, 2004, you're on, what, Mississippi, and um, just boat goes, basically grounds itself. You go flying. And next yeah. thing you know, your 19-year-old guy who one minute is a football player, next minute you're quadriplegic. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it happens in a, in, in the blink of an eye, and, and it's just one of those things that, you know, it's we're on the river and enjoying it. We've been on the river. Um, you know, we're there on on the river every every weekend, and when it's nice out, and in Wisconsin being on a river town, and um, and so a freak accident hits the bottom of the river. Um, I'm sitting on the boat doing, you know, I'm not, I'm not flipping off the boat. I'm not diving into shallow water. I'm just sitting there. And then the next thing, boom, I fly backwards, hit my head, break my neck. And, 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 in that split second go from, you know, six, five and 260 pounds. And, um, at the peak of what I thought my athletic career was. And, um, and then the next, the next minute I'm, you know, the doctors are telling me I'm not going to walk again. And I'm a quadriplegic and spinal cord injury and all this verbiage that I had no idea what was about and had no idea what life in a chair was about. But um, that moment was, um, was a big one for me. And, and, you know, the talk about identity and, and, sure. and kind of ripped away as an athlete and, and didn't think I was going to be an athlete again. And, and, and so, yeah, a lot of, a lot of emotions, a lot of like just a, a roller coaster um, up and down of what's life going to be like. And you basically have to relearn how to eat and you have to, what was the toughest, what was the toughest adaptation for you to this new world? Yeah, I think like the toughest thing is mentally to get over. I think as, a, as, as men, uh, especially we deal with um, emotions that we're not necessarily great at, uh, at exploring or at figuring out. And some, you know, as a guy that's, you know, 19 and, I felt invincible and all of a sudden you're like, you know, rip away what is my favorite thing to do is play sports and, and, and be an athlete. And then I'm going like, how can I do that in a wheelchair? You know, for me, I thought wheelchair sports and adaptive athletics. Like I was like, oh, these are going to, it's going to be terrible. Like there's no way that I can provide that competitive fire that I had before or quench that competitive fire. And, and, and so I'm thinking like, what am I going to do? Like, what, what could I possibly do that provided me so much passion? And so it was a, uh, exploration into finding passion and having that purpose aligned with it. Yeah, one of the quotes I love of yours is we all have a, a choice to not let our circumstances define who we are. Finding again, how important is that for you? Yeah, the, when I found wheelchair rugby, I started playing it, um, realized I could be an athlete in a wheelchair, um, but that those choices started it starts from the get go choices to, Hey, I'm going to get out of bed and move on with life. You know, and that involves, you know, like you said, uh, figuring out how to eat, figuring out how to put a sock on pants, shirt, everything. And, and making those small choices and then going, Hey, I want to go figure out what this athletic, you know, adaptive athletics is going to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to go to a practice. And so making that choice or making the choice like, Hey, I'm going to try to get as independent as possible in my wheelchair so I can, um, so, so my girlfriend, who's my wife now, can, can be a, a wife and not a nurse. So like I'm you know, trying to figure that out. And so 
Um, I think those choices just, you know, continue to compile into something greater, but just a simple choice. Cause everyone always says, you know, how do you, how do you get from being in a hospital bed to Paralympian and making those choices every day? Um, it's so important. It's so important to be, be able to kind of conquer the day by making the right choice, making the right choice. And, what, what do you look at as the lowest point for you? Man, I think the lowest point um, was probably in the hospital and contemplating, yeah. can I do this life in a wheelchair? And, it, and it, it, it happened for maybe a couple hours, one day. Yeah. You know, hold on, Bob. Hey, can you guys be quiet, please? Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm sure we can cut this since it's not live. Yeah. But uh, um, so... But no, I think it, 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 I'm in the hospital and I'm yeah. thinking like, I've got these questions circling around in my head, you know, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? And I'm thinking like, gosh, I can't, I can't play a sport. I can't do what I absolutely love to do. So is it worth it? And that was probably the lowest point. But I think for me, and, and it's so important, I think, you know, within the CAF community as well, the support factor and having people in your life that can speak into it and having people in life that can support you when you are feeling down because we all feel like that, you know, like I think a lot of times, you know, you interview and you're like, well, you know, I'm, I've done this, this, and this, and man, I'm really good. And it's like, no, you know what? Like I failed a lot and I have failed a failures a lot. And thank God I don't, I, I don't think about thinking about um, that lowest point a lot, but I think having people in your life and having that support group and that community around you um, has helped me a lot for sure. So you not, you don't just get into quad rugby you become really good at it, right? You're talking 12 years on a national team, two-time USQRA Athlete of the Year, co-captain for seven years, three world championship teams, the bronze medal. When did you know, this is my sport? Everything I did in football and basketball was great, but I can be really good at this. I think for me, um, I think that's part of, part of the awesome part about it is that like, you know, you have that moment like, oh, you feel like you arrived. I'm still chasing it in my opinion. Like, I'm still chasing the ultimate prize in our sport, which is the gold medal in, in the Paralympics. Um, so I think that's part of it. And I, and, and like, historically, I, you know, like, it's hard to be like, oh, I'm, I'm better than this person or I'm better than this person. But for me, I'm like, I'm still chasing the ultimate prize. I'm also still chasing greatness. I want to get better throughout this next year. Now that we have another year with this postponement deal, I want to get better in this year because I can be better than I would, would have been in August of this year. So like, I want to get better in 2021. And, um, and I think maybe at the end of my career, I'll be able to appreciate it a little bit more, but like, I think all my, my medals and stuff like that, besides my, my Paralympic medal are in a box and sitting in my basement. And so like, oh. it's just, it's just one of those things like I don't want to think about or, 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 or be complacent. So the world championship medals are all hanging out somewhere in a box. They're, they're, they're in a, in a, storage closet in the box like somewhere in the basement yeah i haven't brought them out so you come off of a bronze in 2012 and i'm sure at that point you and the team are going okay right, gold in rio we're going to gold in rio when you end up being an alternate for 2016 after coming off the bronze being a co-captain i mean that had to be one of the toughest moments it, it was, it was, a, you know, you talked about like, what was the worst moment? That moment, as far as my athletic career and after, you know, overcoming um, the accident and figuring out life again, and then you're at the highest peak and you're ready to go and, and, and you're tunnel visioned on this gold medal and then you don't go and you want to point fingers and you have all these emotions and you're, you're pissed off and you're going like, you know, like what, this is not the plan. This no. is not what I had, I had no. signed up for. And now that, you know, and, and uh, down the road, I've already got kids and I've got my wife. And so like, it's a family aspect as well. Um, but going through that and making some of the choices that I did with going through that and learning, I learned so much and it was a tough process because I didn't want to go do that. And I think a lot no. of times you don't want something like this to happen. You know, you think back to being 19, like I didn't want to be in a wheelchair. I didn't want to live this life in a wheelchair, but then it happened. And I've learned that you can't control some of those uncontrolled circumstances that you don't like, you don't, you don't get to control, but you do get to control the response. And so responding through that and learning from those moments of like, why did I fail? Why did I not get picked? You know, some of it's outside of my control, 
Yeah. But at the same time, I get to control how I, how I respond. And so like, how can I be a better leader? How can I be a better athlete? How can I be um, better for the culture of USA wheelchair rugby? And, and I think that trickled into my personal life as well. How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better father? What matters um, when this gets pulled away? And so I, man, I learned so much through that moment and through that time. But in 2016, if you would have asked me, I would have said, you can go, you can go. <laughs> eat yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, thank you. But, um, but yeah, I think going through that and then having hindsight, man, that was a really important time in my life. Well, and also you're, you know, such an integral part of the team. You're still going to training, right? Knowing you're not going to the games. You have to be, you have to suck it up. You have to be that great teammate and leader even though maybe oh, deep inside, you're oh, pretty upset. I, there, it was... It, <laughs> I think I'll touch a nerve here. This is good. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, I, Bob, that training camp, and we're... And it's a training camp for two weeks. It's not like an in and out three-day yeah. thing where you can fake it to make it for three days. No, it's two weeks. And preparing, you know, all the lines are going to play. And I'm not part of it. The jersey ceremony, when we're handing out... Jer like, they're handing out jerseys to the, to the guys that are going. Getting the... Like, the whole thing inside i'm dying right and i'm pissed off and i'm raging and i'm angered and but and then i'm going like what but it's something inside me going like you're going to be so mad at yourself if you don't put forth as much effort and i think part of it honestly was like all right i'm playing in like scout team and so i'm going to kick their ass as much as I, like i want to go out there and beat them in right so, uh, right like because uh, uh, that'll make me feel better so it was like kind of but then you go at the end of the day, if I can do that for them, like that's all I can do. I'm not going to be in Rio. I'm not going to be in the sidelines. I can't say anything. So I, the least I can do, or maybe the most I can do is show up to this camp, give it my all, try to win every set that I'm out of the court. Um, as in a, like a ha ha told you so in a way, but maybe yeah. just trick myself into saying, Hey, like at the end of the day, that this is how I can be the best teammate. This is how I can be the best leader. And, and I think that's really helped me talk to guys that are alternates throughout the squad and say, Hey, like I've been in your shoes. Um, and you might have to fake it for a little bit. You might have to, you might have to lie to yourself a little bit, but at the same time, like you owe it to your, to yourself, number one, and to your teammates that you've got to be able to respond in this way. Like this, you know, it's going to suck. It's not going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of emotions. You're probably going to hate some of us, but this is the right way to do it. And is it a positive for you for the Paralympics to be delayed a year? Do you feel that it gives you more time? Uh, to, or were you, this was, you had a timeline, you're going to the games. Here's, I, I think here's, here's where I'm at. And right away I'm going like this, uh, like, like everyone, this sucks. Right. You're five months away, right. you're 150 days out. And it's just so excited for everything. My kids were excited. Um, you know, and like we had named our team, our, our like official 12 that were going, I'd assumed I was going to go, um, you know, and then, and you know, the kids have been learning to count in Japanese and like, you know, they're so excited and then they were, you know, and so, um, but then, you know, it gets postponed and which was the, obviously we all know it's the right call. It's the only call like you know, there's no way. And, and, uh, I've been, it, there was about two weeks where. I'm going, man, like another, like add on 12 more months of training, add on 12 more months of like, and, and so it's a lot. And I think it's just, I think it's important to take time, to take pause, to recalibrate. That recalibration, I think some people lie to themselves and be like, oh, let's flip the switch. Let's be super positive. Like, I think you're probably burying some emotions and feelings in there a little bit. So like, I like to take a little bit more time to recalibrate and let myself rest and let myself like process all right, this is going to be another year added on to five more months, so like 17 months instead of five months in the timeline for my family and kids. Um, and, and with that in mind as well. So I think it's, it's been a recalibration process. I think I'm probably still in it a little bit, but um, it is what it is. And we're going to, you know, you get through it. Yeah. Yeah. What is CAF brought to you? CAF. So like, I think CAF and, and I love seeing the videos that you're putting out right now. And I think honestly, in in like the, sh the small picture like the or the recent picture i guess is what i'm saying is like the timing of the grants couldn't have been any more perfect yeah. i mean goodness great like literally the day after postpone um 
Paralympics comes out, day after grant emails come out. And it j just like that, when you're, honestly, you're at the lowest point of this whole process, you're like, you're gonna postpone, you have to train, and then boom, the grant comes out. And for me, that was huge because it's like, I'm not used to training in my basement. And so having that support, having to say, hey, we're gonna get through it together, we're gonna get through this as a community um, was so important for, for me. Um, and they've been, um, CAS has been part of the process since I was first on the national team. I got a hand cycle for cross training in 2009. So ever since I've been on the national team, they've been a huge part of, of my journey. Love it. All right. Best CAF memory. Best CAF memory. I think honestly, it was a recent one. I, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to um, go out and speak before, before the ride um, from San okay. Jose down to, to San Diego. Um, for the million dollar challenge. And that was amazing. That was awesome to be part of it. I'm like, I want a hand cycle. I want to go, go and help these guys. So it, it was great to see um, some of the athletes. It was great to see a lot of uh, the cyclists that are huge um, supporters of CAF and get to know them and, and see them. So that was, that was such a fun time for me. Yeah. Go to comfort food. Go to comfort food. Oh, I got to go with pizza. All I love up. pizza. Yeah. Most recent TV show binge. Uh, I did watch Tiger King and then right now, Last Dance. Like, who isn't watching The Last Dance of Michael Jordan? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, favorite book or podcast? Um, uh, Carrie Newhoff's leadership podcast is a really big one for me. And then um, the book I'm reading right now is High Performance Habits. Hmm. Yeah. Person you miss seeing the most? Person I miss seeing the most anyone i haven't left the neighborhood in like six I was <laughs> anyone doesn't matter yeah <laughs> place you can't wait to visit when this is over uh i'm excited to go back to training camp when this is over and be able to see the team again and be a be a team and be cohesive and get this thing rolling favorite thing to do with the kids um we've been playing a lot of monopoly in the life game and so that's been a lot of fun and we there's a lot of trash talk in our house too so that's a lot of fun what words do you love to hear from a coach? Um, super simple, but like, good job. Like, the simple affirmation is always fun to hear. And what words do you hate to hear from a coach? Uh, you're coming out of the game. Ooh, yeah, you want to stay in the whole time. Whoa. Yeah, I'm staying. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Hey, Joe, thanks for everything you do for CAF. If you have a message for people who are other challenged athletes who are sitting at home right now, just – wondering if this is ever going to end, what, what would you tell them in terms of just staying the course? Yeah, I think um, the, the simple thing that comes to mind, and I keep telling myself this over and over again, because I'm terrible at it, but um, being present with what you have going on right now. So like for me, I've got four other humans in my house. Yes. And so being present with my relationship with, with, with April and then my kids, like spending time, because normally I'm on the road speaking or, or, um, or competing or training. And so having this time together as a family and being able to just kind of build on our foundation and the relationships inside the house is, is super important to me. So doing that and then also controlling um, your response to the situation. Don't worry about the uncontrolled stuff, but the response to the situation. Um, and I think, I think people will get through. Love it. Joe, thanks for being a huge part of the CAF family, man. Always such a treat to chat with you. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Joe Delagrave has been our guest. Check us out on Challenged Athletes Live.